2006 Ford Mustang GT S197. The most Mustang that ever Mustanged. This is it. This is our first giveaway car. All you have to do is buy the cool mug to get entered. Every mug you buy gets you automatically entered to win this Mustang GT. This RCR giveaway is to help raise funds to buy the Toyota 4Runner of RCR's dreams. So click the link in the description to get entered to win this S197 Mustang GT. The deadline to enter is October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let's get the meme out of the way. Why these crash? Because you don't respect what the S197 really is. Most of those people you see crashing Mustangs outside of Cars and Coffee or Name Your Car Mead are people who are coming from front-wheel drive cars. And I can hear them already. No, oh, but I had a Focus uh, RS. That makes 350 horsepower. How can a 300 horsepower Mustang possibly compete with a 350 horsepower Focus RS? I know how to drive a car. I drive around in rally boat. It sends into the rear tires. So this is only rear wheel drive, so it has to be easier. Eh, but I have an Evo 9, and that's a turbocharged Ford, and that's faster than a Mustang, and the Evo 9 is 400 horsepower. I'm not a bad driver. I know how to drive. The S197 has no help. Yes, it has traction control, but the traction control is a Game Boy Advance. It only works when the lighting is perfect. This is a V8, a manual transmission, and rear-wheel drive with limited slip, and it's crawling up your daughter's leg with no quarter asked and none given. And that's a Hunter S. Thompson line. My 2004 Subaru Forester camera car is more advanced than this thing. And for a lot of people who bought S197s and crashed them, they didn't really understand what they were getting into. Or maybe, maybe they had an S13 or a Miata or some other smaller displacement rear-wheel drive car, and they didn't, this was their first V8. And they're thinking, oh, it's not that powerful of a V8. But they didn't understand that these things give their power right away. Or maybe they get excited, realizing that they can do a burnout anywhere they want, and think, this thing probably drifts great. And then, oops, all traction gone, and I'm going backwards. The S197 was larger in all directions from the SN95. The back seat is kind of usable now. The front seats are big and tall friendly, and not enough people talk about the wonderful Tremec TR3650. It's a five-speed manual, and it doesn't flop around. It snaps right into gear. Sometimes it fights first, but you don't really need first in this car. Here's another thing, and I'm kind of knocking on tuner culture. People coming into the very affordable S197, these things are kind of bottoming out in price right now. Uh, there's really no collectors on them. Right now, we're looking back at the uh, SN95s, the Cobras, the Mystics, those things coming up in price. The S197s are just kind of meh, they're there. So people see a bargain and they buy it. And they may be used to uh, four-cylinder or four-cylinder turbo manual shifting which is, you know, pull-away styles of clutch sh clutch slipping, you know, riding the clutch a little bit to get it going, Gr maybe grinding, kissing, fisting, fondling, dreaming of you on nights when the wind blows cold and I leave my bedroom windows open. It makes my room cold, so I sleep with extra blankets pressing down on me like I imagine you would. One pillow for my head, one pillow for my arms, and one more for my thighs. Let's visit the land of make-believe me when I tell you you can pull out from a dead stop on a slight uphill with no throttle input. There's enough rotational mass in the 4.6 liter three valve modular to move the car away at idle. Just let the clutch out smoothly. Pause to let it grab and let it out the rest of the way. 
Do that for second gear too. In casual traffic, your right foot isn't going to move until third gear. If you can't get if you can't get the rev the engine and pull out mentality out of your head, just use second gear for traffic lights. Really, first gear is for big hill starts and for just spinning the tires and crashing into the opposite sidewalk. But the S197 got everything right. This is as close to the original intention and interpretation of the Mustang as we ever get and probably will ever will get. Look, round headlights, three vertical tail lights, a flat dash, a three-spoke steering wheel, and they managed to make the airbag small enough that it sort of looks like the pad that used to be on uh, later first-gen Mustangs. You have lateral inline fog lights, and 4.6 liters is pretty much 289 cubic inches, which is the same as the original GTV8. The futuristic styling of the SN95 was gone. The S197 looks as close to your memories while still working within safety standards. Okay, so the three valve modular. It's not as long lived as the two valve modular found in most base F-150s, Panther bodies, and police interceptors, but it makes more power with its variable cams. But it doesn't make the same power as the 4.6 liter four valve modular double cam Intec, which was found in the Marauder, the SVT Cobra, Mach 1, as well as in foreign imports. The three valver exists in this weird middle ground. It's kind of like how the Sega Dreamcast was king of the hood before the PlayStation 2 came rolling in. The 4-cam Intec was better on all fronts. And the S197 scene is regrettably full of people spending Toyota Tacoma money trying to make their 3-valver more powerful than the 4-cam engine. And that's where you get, my Mustang is best Mustang, because I put, I put, my Mustang is best Mustang because I have the in k n intake. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I have Flowmaster exhaust. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I don't have any color converters anymore. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I paint the interior trim pieces in the same color as the car. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I got the boom boom speakers. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I have a staggered wheel set up and I have bigger wheels and with the attention with the kind of like a cracker, so that's why my Mustang. If you must modify your S197, here's what you do. And I went right to Bruce Hen from Bruce Hen's Garage for this, who works on Mustangs all the time. He says, the move for the S197, and write this down because here it is, Pro Charger, a tune to support the Pro Charger, headers, high flow cats, and some sort of Flowmaster exhaust. Lastly, reinforce the lower control arms in the rear, then walk away. That's it. That's all you do. Pro charger, tune, exhaust, lower control arms. That's it. Don't even mess with the gearing. 355 is low enough. You're doing that, you're hovering around 450, 500 horsepower up from the 300, and that's all the power you want for the street. But I want 410 gearing. Somebody else is 410 gearing. And I can't do it. They accelerate faster than me. And they did more burnouts than me. So I want 410 gearing. You can't have 410 gearing. Okay, at least I have 373 gearing. It's not fair because I want 410 gearing. And everybody at Maple Grove Raceway will make fun of me. You're going to be fine with 355. <laughs> I'm giving you 327 gearing until you act right. <laughs> oh, you're going to pout? You're going to pout about that? You want 308? Because we can go 308 gearing. That's right. Look what the S197 really is and what you're getting. You get a V8. You get a five or six speed manual. You get a V8 that actually revs in 2006, and you get an analog feeling car with a five or six speed manual transmission and just enough computer engine management to make it reliable. If you charted the personality types associated with Mustangs, you get something like a gradient with well-meaning people on the left 
who just want to enjoy a slice of sentimentality that can never be recovered beyond those four wheels. And Billy Blow Off Valve on the right, rocking his fat rimmed sunglasses with the rhinestone frames, burying his face in a dry patch of Florida muff and blasting bad company, arriving at every car show, bursting through a thick cloud of spray on deodorant spores, Pro Charger whining all the while. The S197 rests somewhere in the middle. An aggressive, stylish, overlooked, underrated bit of business. A modern piece of engineering that calls back to the lower of the Ford Motor Company in the way it incorporates the styling cues of the first generation Mustangs. It's imperfect, but self-assured about it. Like a guy who doesn't make much money but doesn't care because he has other things to be happy about in his life. You get McPherson struts on the front and a three-link rear suspension in the back with a pan head bar and that old live rear axle that everybody complained about. And then, then suddenly they loved it and then they hated the independent rear suspension that came, you know, in later generations. Ford said they didn't do the uh, independent rear suspension on the S197s because it would have raised prices by $5,000 per unit. Not that Mustang enthusiasts wouldn't have paid it, but I understand their thinking. They had this 8.8 .8 rear axle that they used in everything, and it was doing just fine. So why mess with a good thing that worked? Why go for the devil you don't know? The fifth generation, or S197 Mustang, was produced from 2005 to 2014. It's the last gasp of confidently non-threatening aggression before Ford decided the Mustangs had to all look like teenagers who just got teabagged for the first time in modern warfare. This was built on Ford's DC2 platform, standing for D-Class Two-Door Coupe. It's the automotive equivalent of a gone wild comment section, but if you're trying to beat the traffic on the Conshohocken curve with the quickness, then here you go. Mustang S197 GT. For carrying you away from a life of coffee shops with menus out of your sans serif nightmares, covered in clip art and cappuccino and Reuben sandwiches that scream graphic design is my passion. The Mustang S197 GT doesn't care about the undeserved meme reputation it's been given. S197 GT, it's a middle finger carousel playing a pipe organ cover of Lick It Up by Kiss. An S197 is shorthand for the dopamine dump of a stationary man achieving motion of a dry spell finally broken by welcome hungry thrusts. It's a ridiculous car, but it's fun. It's excessive, like a hamburger with donut buns, which might actually be the point, because Mustangs exist to do Mustang things. Yeah! To be loud and fast and to steer headlong toward the interstate seductive embrace and away from the self-imposed restrictions of the timid mind. Toxicity breeds around Mustangs and it flourishes like a plant in wet moss. They're as ubiquitous as the spotted lanternfly, at least in the US, and people hate them because the heritage of the car imbues the rowdier element with a sense that they have something special here. But then I'm not sure how much Mustang owners even care what people think about their Mustangs. I mean, Nick's SN95, that's just a daily or how often the toxicity surrounding Mustangs actually translates into real-world interactions. The toxicity of the internet and real-life spaces don't always correspond, if for no other reason than because the internet is at least transparent about it. There's an honesty to the hatred of the human heart when projected through the digital realm, because an opinion can be unvarnished and amplified, usually by capital letters and it can be ignored and forgotten in a way an in-person interaction typically can't. But do people really hate these things? I mean, one thing that Ford is very good at is selling things based on looks. Take a mundane product, wrap it in reflective packaging, and sell for a profit. I think most people would fall into the middle of the chart between those who hate these cars and those who love them unconditionally. Because it takes so much energy to actually care enough to hate Mustangs, unless it bung your sister and didn't call her back. So, so when you see a Mustang like this, your curiosity might get an appetite. You might find yourself wondering what it's like to drive one, what it's like to own one, 
what it's like to be seen in one and suddenly realize that other Mustang people wave at you. And you might even think it looks like fun. But I feel like most people don't let love or hate enter into the equation. I'd like to think that, at some level, people don't judge Mustangs by some of their drivers. Or if they do, they have minds open enough to be challenged by the experience of driving one themselves. The S197 is a mind-changer Mustang, and it's probably as close to the one true Mustang, the most complete Mustang, the Mustangiest Mustang, as we'll ever see again. Buy a mug, win a car. Buy a mug, win a Mustang. Buy a mug, win a car. Buy a mug. Click the link in the description. I saw it on a Tuesday. One night on NBC My C10 heart is begging you Baby, just leave the trucks be You're filling me up with lies Gas explosion drive on the daylight You got all the shots you need And I'm begging please don't take my Take my truck I'm not any better at this yet. Nah, screw it.